Um, well, uh, Van, what is your opinion of the recent theories of truth that have been uh, put forth, for example, by uh, Paul Horich, uh, which, uh, and earlier, of course, by Ramsey and uh, uh, Strawson, um, uh, uh, according to which the entire content of the notion of truth is exhausted by uh, that infinite set of uh, sentences called Tarski biconditional sentences of the form, quotes, snow is white is true, if and only if snow yes. is white. Yes, I, I almost agree, but I think that there's, there, there's an important, one, one important qualification. It's, it's our custom, uh, even, even as, uh, if as naturalists we uh, think of uh, uh, there being no higher, or no higher uh, uh, tribunal than science itself uh, for, uh, for truth, even so, uh, we don't we don't say that a sentence is true if and only if uh, 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 science affirms it. We allow rather that science can be wrong. Uh, the scientists themselves do that. Uh, and uh, uh, when uh, a scientific theory that's been accepted uh, turns out to be uh, uh, untenable, uh, we don't say well, and then a change is made. We move from uh, Newton to Einstein, say. Uh, now, we don't say, well, uh, that used to be true in Newton's day, but it's not true anymore. We shouldn't say. It's not, it's not standard usage to say that. Um, but rather, uh, uh, we used to think it was true, uh, but we found out it wasn't. So this makes a peculiar predicate of truth, uh, and uh, uh, th this, this trait. And what does that mean? That, that, that's the sense, that's the extent to which one might say, yes, truth is transcendental. Uh, however, uh, I think you can also accommodate this without uh, exceeding the bounds of national, uh, naturalism uh, simply by uh, recognizing it as a uh, curious and interesting twist of universal usage uh, of language uh, and, uh, a, uh, and a particularly interesting one because it, uh, it, it symbolizes somehow uh, the striving of uh, uh, the scientist uh, 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 ever approaching some goal, of trying to appro approximate some goal, which is the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it may, uh, and I think it's a, I think it's a salutary idiom in that uh, in that way, yeah. uh, but uh, uh, it uh, doesn't uh, show that there is any such end of the line. So the, let, let me get quite clear about this. The transcendentality comes in in our being willing to say such things as there are, in all probability, things we now think are true which aren't true, which you can't cash out for any particular. Suppose we yep. used to think that snow was pink, but we now have now found out that it's in fact white. For a particular sentence, we can get rid of, we used to think that that was true. Uh, but not where we actually quantify over uh, sentences and say there are things that we, in all probability, uh, uh, that are not true, that we now think are true. Is that... Is that, uh, is that uh, yes, yes, good. Uh, here we're quantifying and uh, uh, making a, a uh, existential uh, uh, assertion that uh, we do not prove by instantiation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Made reasonable by induction or something like induction. Yes. The frontiers of mathematical logic now are well beyond, to put it mildly, uh, most uh, philosophy students. So I wonder if you could give us uh, some advice or give philosophy students some advice. How much mathematical logic do you think a student aiming to work in the center of the subject in metaphysics, epistemology, philosophy of language, philosophy of mind, how much mathematical logic do we need to know? Uh, good. Uh, well, uh, uh, yes, I, I think uh, uh, I'd, I'd like to put it actually in terms of a pair, uh, uh, lower and upper uh, bounds of, of a band. Uh, the, the lower one, uh, and uh, they certainly ought to know this even if they're uh, going to be just teaching uh, 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 some offbeat branch of philosophy like uh, uh, aesthetics in some offbeat uh, 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 undergraduate college. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, namely, they ought, to, they, they ought to know truth function theory and quantification theory. Uh, they ought to have command of a, uh, uh, of a, a complete proof procedure of those, uh, plus, uh, plus identity. Excuse me, that's the myth. In fact, I've thought for, uh, ever since I've been teaching, 
that that's something that ought to be required of everybody, whether he's going into philosophy or not. Uh, and then uh, uh, what uh, I would take as uh, a de de desirable for the general, uh, uh, general philosopher uh, beyond that uh, would be uh, um, a, uh, uh, an acquaintance with the logical paradoxes and the, uh, the, uh, and the, the uh, uh, existential uh, uh, axioms, axioms for existence of uh, sets uh, in, uh, pro uh, well, in, in, since it's easy enough, in several uh, uh, alternative uh, set theories to see just what the philosophical situation is there, how it's a matter of choosing not on, a very, on a, any tangibly factual basis, but uh, uh, just considering uh, 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 various uh, virtues of systems. So they should have that. Also, they should have, uh, uh, even in relation to logic in the narrow sense, uh, uh, they should have uh, uh, the, the, proof, the, the completeness proof for uh, uh, logic uh, under control, uh, which actually goes back to Gödel also, the completeness proof. Uh, and uh, uh, along with that, there's this uh, certainly philosophically interesting uh, Levenheim's theorem that just comes out as a byproduct, practically, of, from the proof. Uh, uh, and uh, they should have Gödel's theorem and some, uh, uh, some acquaintance, at least, uh, uh, with its proof, although no point in going through all the grimy details of, uh, of uh, arithmetization uh, of, of logic. Um, Maybe I'd uh, maybe I'd leave it there.